Well, here we go. EU security services remain the subject of intense debate after the terrorist and internet sensation known as Jihadi John was identified as British national Mohammed Mvazi. David Cameron defended British intelligence's failure to apprehend Mvazi by saying, oh, 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 rugby? How about that rugby, eh? British intelligence pledged to do everything in their power to fight the influence of IS videos online and arranged immediately for a Scottish wedding singer to tweet a photo of a blue and black dress, which distracted the entire internet immediately. Hmm. And just to make sure no one on the planet sympathized with the IS Islamists, the uh, militants made a show of destroying priceless pagan sculptures because they weren't Islamic putting them in the same category as, oh, the Taliban, the Christian Coalition, and the Texas Board of Education. Ironically, the one pagan statue they didn't destroy is this one, reminding us all that ISIS is, in fact, a girl's name. And bringing it back to the EU, IS militants in Africa threatened to attack Rome. Rome respectfully responded that they're more frightened of another visit from Rotterdam football fans. Mm. EU's Commissioner for Climate Action and Energy, the former oil mogul Miguel Arias Cañete, unveiled his new proposals for energy security, which would take a big chunk out of the EU's sustainability targets for 2030. In response to criticism from environmentalists, Cañete is now proposing to build the Keystone XL pipeline through Western Europe. And now it's time for another good news, bad news. This week's topic is the Grexit or the Greek exit. The good news, we've avoided the Grexit. Greece's new leaders reached a compromise with the Euro group. Investor confidence is returning and the numbers might be edging upward. But the bad news, everybody's reporting on this story like it's bad news. Alex Tsipras forced to compromise his campaign promises Germany forced to compromise its plans for extra austerity. Well, the good news, to quote an old Greek-American professor, you know it's a good compromise when everybody hates it equally. The bad news is the way this decision happened, with the Greek plan, the budget being put to a vote in various EU parliaments, such as Germany, the Netherlands, Finland. Well, the good news, as the birthplace of democracy, shouldn't Greece be happy with all of this voting in their name? The bad news, of course, yeah, Greece basically has a bunch of random other countries voting on their budget and their future, which only strengthens the argument of Eurosceptic parties like Greece's third biggest party, the Nazi-sympathizing Golden Dawn. And pro-EU Alex Tsipras is now on the defensive with his own people. The good news, at least Tsipras can now spend some time with his own people, including his new ministers, such as the country's first ever anti-corruption minister, Panagiotis Nikolodis. He was featured on the front page of the New York Times. The bad news, he's also the man voted most likely to die in mysterious circumstances. The good news, faced with an annual 76 billion euros in unpaid taxes, Nikolodis doesn't have the manpower to tackle the problem. What? Why is that good news? Well, it's because that's the one government ministry where the Greeks can start hiring again with no trouble from the Euro group. Say hello to your new jobs in the Greek anti-corruption ministry. The bad news, there's still billions of euros that Tsipras can't get his hands on as long as the Greek Orthodox Church is tax exempt, as long as Greek oligarchs keep parking their money in Switzerland, and as long as the pension system pays government workers to retire at about age 50. The good news, Greece is not the only place where state pensions are bankrupting the country. Cut to the United States. The bad news, city by city, state by state, no one has the money for the growing pension payouts to retired government workers who are, thank goodness, living longer than ever, including pencil pushers all the way to police departments. And no one is talking about it until now. The good news, New Jersey governor, Chris Christie, otherwise a reprehensible fellow, submitted a budget daring to take on the powerful unions that protect the unpayable pension plans. The bad news, given this example of actual leadership 
America has declared him unfit to run for president, and he's basically been ousted as a Republican candidate for 2016. The good news, Chris, Christy, there might just be a position open for you in Greece. Say hello to Chris Christopoulos.